Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new to the channel, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dale, and I'll be your host here at Dale Frazier Photography. In today's video, we're going to go over the Unit 3 assignment, the photos assignment from the New York Institute of Photography. So let's get to the video. Again guys, thanks for tuning in to Dale Frazier Photography. We've gotten a handful of requests from viewers asking a little bit more about the New York Institute of Photography. So I thought in today's video, what might be kind of fun is we're gonna show you the images that we submitted. I'm gonna read off basically the qualifications or the requirements for the photo assignment. And then I'll show you the images that we submitted and show you the grade as well that we received from our unit three assignment that we completed. So <clears throat> the first one is submit one photo of an outdoor object, not a person that you think is enhanced by light coming from a specific direction. That is using either backlighting 45 degree side lighting or 90 degree side lighting and this is the image that we submitted and it is a basically it's bob wire that's strung across an old old fence post it's golden hour time wise so basically you end up with a 90 degree side light the 90 degree side lighting brings out a lot of texture and detail in your images and it's a fun light to work with and if, if you guys are into portrait photography at all, you probably already know about the golden light. Golden light hours is basically your first hour of light in the morning or the evening, either one, it doesn't really matter. And it's just a really nice, more of a golden color, golden toned light. So that was the image that we submitted and we did receive a total grade because they grade all the images together of 95%. The next one is submit one photo of a person outdoors lit by open shade. And open shade is very similar um, to basically cloud cover. It could be anything from like cloud cover to even being shaded by a building or something like that. As a portrait photographer and the emphasis from here and, and unit four, a lot of it has to do with portrait photographer and taking good pictures of people and improving your photography overall. And the soft, basically if, and I've, we've talked about this in our photo group. If you haven't joined our photo group, I'd love to talk you into joining us over there, but it's called Inspired by You. And one of the ladies actually made the comment that she has noticed when it's cloudy, she gets much better flower images. Well, essentially what's going on on a cloudy day is you have a great big, huge soft box up above. So you got your sun, you got a big cloud, which is essentially a big soft box and you get really nice, smooth light. And that's excellent for taking pictures, portraits. A lot of people will think on a cloudy day, it's not a good day for portraits. It actually is. And then your secondary option is if you're out there and bright sun is all you have to work with, try to find some shade, whether it be the shade from a building or something like that. Now, the one thing I will point out in this picture that I submitted is he did not like the highlights that were blown out in the background because a true open shade is, uh, you're not gonna have the harsh highlights that you see in the background of this image. The image of, and it's a self portrait, obviously, you guys are watching me on here. It's, uh, I'm in open shade, the background is not. If you're using shade trees for open shade, that is something that you'll wanna look at. I did notice it when I was doing the, basically a, just a real quick edit on this photo and I thought, it, in my mind, it doesn't really matter. And then the third assignment is you're actually gonna be submitting two photos and it says submit two photos demonstrating your understanding of using a reflector. Set up a simple still life, outdoors or indoors, on the floor, the ground, the table, your subject may be a vase of flowers or a bowl of fruit or a similar grouping of small objects. When I first read this photo assignment, I didn't <laughs> read it all the way through. And I immediately crossed off the vase of flowers or the bowl of fruit. And I thought, hey, I wanna do a, a, a project 
using an old hand tool here in the shop. And this is the image I'm going to show you them real quick that I did not submit because after rereading the assignment, it says a vase of flowers or a bowl of fruit or a similar grouping of small objects. So this is the hand plane that I submitted. I thought or did not submit that I took pictures of. I thought it was actually cool. If you guys aren't familiar with a, there's a photo community and it's called Pixoto. I'm a member over there as well. And I, I've already gotten one or two awards on this here, uh, hand plane. So I thought that was actually pretty cool. But here's the photos that we did submit and it's gonna be flowers in a vase. And the uh, <laughs> one thing that the uh, guy that was grading my assignment, he, he, you know, they've got to critique you and talk about stuff. And basically he said he would have pulled the flowers further away from the backdrop than what I had them placed at. And the big deal on the backdrop guys when you're using flash or strobe is you're, tr you're trying to eliminate that harsh shadow on the wall. You can not see a shadow from the flowers and the reason that the flowers are closer than what he would like and what he doesn't have knowledge of is it's a small backdrop and that was all I could do. If I would have taken it further away, it would have messed up the backdrop and, and it would have had a different look to it all together. But here and there, it, it's all about learning. It was a fun photo challenge and that's one of the things that I'm really enjoying about the New York Institute of Photography. As many of you know, I have graduated from in the past and I'm retaking it just to kind of brush up on some stuff and also be able to give you guys a fair evaluation. I thought it would be fun to go ahead and add one of the, basically the assignments from unit three, as well as a critique. If this is something that you enjoy, if you would comment down below and let us know, hey, we'd like to see your future photo assignments. I have over the last couple of months, posted up images at either at the beginning of the video or the end of the video, where they were some of the images that we have been submitting for the assignments. I just haven't actually done a formal video and I thought this would be kind of fun since we just did a review on the first half of the New York Institute of Photography. Again, guys, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. Next week, we are going to continue and we're going to work a little bit with focus stacking as, an, as a, another fun way to kind of improve your images and give you a broader focus range other than just using like F16 or something like that. It's just one more fun, cool step, something that you can kind of build up your images and end up with a little bit bigger print, if you will, especially if you're using the Canon Rebel or one of the lesser cameras or older outdated cameras. Until next week, be sure to check out one of our playlists up here. Again, guys, we appreciate your likes, comments, and subscribes. And as always, guys, we hope you have a blessed week. And let's go shoot some stuff. <laughs>